Q-Code and Wood Elf present The Edge of Sleep. Starring Mark Fishbach. Created by Jake Emanuel and Willie Block. Can't breathe. I'm wet. It's blood. Don't panic. Focus. Can you move your arms? No. Fuck. Fuck. Stay calm. Don't show him you're afraid. He's watching me. I can smell him. He stinks of B.O. Let's go for a ride, California boy. I'm bound, gagged, and strapped to a wheelchair at the Santa Mira Hospital. Ten minutes ago, he attacked us. Oh, shit! Shut down! That's why I'm bleeding. I think I've been shot. I can feel a hole in my ribcage. It hurts. Just don't fucking scream. This is a nice hospital. Everything in California is nice. Must be all those high taxes. What happened to Linda and the tail? Ah! I heard them screaming. They dropped to the floor and then... I couldn't see. A window exploded in my face. Ah! My vision was blurry. Blood poured into my eyes. Then, he got me. Okay, California, this'll do. Now, I'm gonna uncover your eyes and take the gag out of your mouth. If you scream, I'll cut your tongue off. Not if you understand me. Good. <coughs> <coughs> now I'm going to untie your hands and feet, and if you can, please hop onto the table. We're in an operating room. I see tools on the surgical tray. What the fuck is he gonna do? Can I reach for the scalpel? No. Quick way to get my head blown off. Up we go. Hey. As I hop onto the table, I realize I'm fucking feeling it. Half an hour ago, I ingested 300 milligrams of modafinil, the most potent simulant known to man. And now, I'm in the fucking fast lane. It feels like I'm on coke, but focused and calm. Hold still, please. He's strapping me to the table. Fuck. Stay in the moment. I might only have one shot to get out of this. You're David, right? Yeah. Katie told me you were here. She's a nice girl. You're a lucky guy. Right now, I don't feel so lucky. <laughs> That's funny. I made him laugh. Is that good? He's walking over to the tools. Fuck, he's picking up the saw. I want to scream. It takes all of my strength to hold it back. My mind is racing. I can't keep up with my own thoughts. Three options lay out before me. Option one. Please, you don't have to do this. I, I don't want to die. Then break down. I beg for my life. <laughs> no, God! No! Fuck that! He'd probably love to hear me beg. I won't give him the satisfaction. Option two. If you're gonna kill me, just do it already. I accept my fate. I am going to die. I try to anger him so that he kills me quickly. Is this what you do to get off, you little limp dick fuck? No! There's a chance that it could backfire. That would be bad. Option three. Katie broke up with me. About two weeks ago. 
Uh, I've had bad fucking breakups before, but this one hurt like your bullet. Well, they say broken bones mend faster than broken hearts. I keep them talking. Ah! If Mateo or Linda made it out, maybe they'll come for me. Maybe. Maybe they're dead. But I have to keep them engaged. Intrigue him, flatter him. Buy as much time as I can. It's the only chance I've got. When you fall in love, that person, they light up the room. They shine so bright that you're blinded. You can't see their flaws, you know. Your friends can see them, so can your family. But they're hidden from you. <coughs> Eventually, you know. That light begins to dim. The brightness fades and you can see clearly again. Then, the flaws start becoming visible. They become so noticeable you fixate on them. That's what happened to Katie. She saw something dark in me that outweighed the light. And what did she see? Something unpredictable. It scared her. You don't look scary. Neither do you. What was she afraid would happen? That I'd hurt her. Would you? I don't know. Pick up the scalpel. Excuse me? Pick it up. Now cut open my shirt. Man, you are all kinds of crazy. Oh, my. He looks down at the old scars that cover my body. I can tell that he's curious. Thank Christ. I know I bought myself five, maybe ten more minutes. The story I'm gonna share is painful but it gives me more time. I will use my personal suffering to entertain him. Who did this to you? Have you ever heard of the Moobles? Okay, so back up into the corner of the van and cover your face. Okay. Are you ready? Yes! All right, on the count of three. One, two, three! <laughs> Fucking plexiglass! Are you hurt? I think I'm okay. But I'm in here with another girl and she isn't responding to me. Right, one second, just unlocking the door. Hi, my name is Linda and this is Mateo. We're here to help you. We've been, we've been kidnapped. I don't know the other girl's name, but she fell asleep and now she's not responding. She's dead. What? I'm sorry. Shouldn't you check her pulse or something? You're Katie, right? Yes. I recognize you from Instagram. I work with Dave. What the fuck is going on? She was fine five minutes ago. She just fell asleep. We're in an epidemic. We don't know how it works, but it's triggered by sleep. What? Did you see where he kept the keys for this lock? Maybe in the glove compartment? He has them on a keychain. Shit. Can we break her loose? No fucking way. He put a steel padlock around the chains. Where's Dave? He's still inside. Is he okay? We didn't see what happened. That cycle lit up the fucking place. We ran for the exit. You can't leave Dave alone with that man. He's very ill. What does he want? Uh, I don't know. He said... He said... He said he wanted to grab a couple more girls and head down the coast. Fucking hell. What are you doing? Checking the glove compartment. Maybe he left a handgun. What? Did you find something? Linda. Linda! 
Driver's licenses. All girls. There are dozens of them. As I lie strapped at the table, I finish my story. A part of me feels ashamed to have shared something so intimate with this man. Was it worth the five minutes has bought me? You've been through a lot. It was a long time ago. It doesn't matter. That kind of pain stays with you. I've tried to move on, put it behind me. You know, it sounds like you could use a little R&R, &R, my friend. Tell you what, I was thinking about heading down to Cabo with a couple of girls. Why don't you come along? It'd be nice to have another guy around. You hang out with too many women and it really fucks with your head. Play along. Kiss his ass. Act like you're buying into his bullshit. Oh, yeah, that sounds great. And in case you haven't noticed, there aren't a lot of people around. We can do whatever we want. Oh, let's go. First, there's just one little problem we need to address. Yeah? It's important to keep things simple. Start this off on the right note. Uh, agreed. And the last thing we want is drama and bad vibes when we're down in paradise. <laughs> yeah, totally. So, what do we do about Katie? I know you both have a history. I'm, I'm starting to take a shine to her. Uh, no, you, you, you don't understand. Katie and I, we're done. And we're... The real issue is that I'm a jealous guy. I just won't be able to trust you. But... I've got a solution. What are you doing? It's a simple procedure. It won't take five minutes. We'll get you an ice pack and some Advil, and you'll be on your feet in 24 hours. What the fuck is that? Morphine. I'll apply it to the region, and you won't feel a thing. Wait, no, get the fuck away from me! If you squirm, I'll have to put you under. Help! Just relax. It's easier than getting your wisdom teeth out. Listen, don't do this. David. I promise you won't miss them. You'll be as happy as every dog you see on the street. They're a smart animal and they don't seem to mind. Always smiling with their tongues out, wagging their tails, and every one of them has been snipped. Fuck you! As I writhe, I realize one of my arm straps is loose. If I pull free, you'll notice immediately. There's nothing I can do. Oh, God. Oh, fuck. He's unbuckling my pants. Don't scream. Don't beg. That's exactly what he wants. I know you might be a little resentful at first, but we'll move past this. You and I are going to be best friends. You'll still be able to enjoy a beer on the beach, watching the sunset, feeling the sand between your toes. And at night, when Katie and I are having fun in our room, you'll just have to enjoy a good book. Don't close your eyes. Look straight at him. Don't be afraid. Fuck. Him. <gasps> Pitch Black. The power's gone out. Fuck! We're alone in the darkness. This is my chance. I pull my arm free. Reach for the scalpel. <laughs> My fingers open, but I grab it anyway. I find his handle and swing it at the darkness. I hit the fucker. Maybe his arm or his shoulder. Oh, you're dead! No! The power turns on. As my eyes adjust to the light. I see Mateo crouch low. Come here! Fucking hijo de puta! Fuck you! Mateo! Mateo! Hey, man! Oh, Jesus Christ, what the uh, fuck did he do? Oh, uh, uh, he shot me. Mateo! I got the fucker, but you need to come down here right now. Dave's been shot, it's bad. He's losing a lot of blood. Uh, I'm on my way. Uh, 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 where's Katie? Hey, she's okay, man. Relax. Don't try to get up. Breathe. Breathe. I remember a lesson my mother taught me.
It was during the year I was sent away, up north in the forests of Oregon. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear David, happy birthday to you. <laughs> okay bud, blow out your candles. Quick, before they melt. Okay then, I'll just blow them out. <sighs> Want a slice of cake? Okay, fine. More for myself. David, are you really not going to talk to me? Listen, I know you're disappointed, but I spoke to your dad, and we both didn't think it was the right time for a visit. But he loves you, and he misses you, and he's so proud of how well you're doing. You said I could see him. Soon, I promise. When? Soon. Okay, a few more months. How about opening your present? Is it blocks? No, it's not blocks. What is it? Well, you'll have to open it and see. Catcher. It's really fun. I will teach you how to play. I don't want to. David. I want a real toy. I want to see Dad. I know, I know, honey. He wants to see you, too. I hate it here. I want to go home. Davy, Davy. I want to go home. I want to go home. Stop it! You know we can't go home right now. Not until you're better. Can I just have one real toy? Not yet. What about my dinosaurs? I had them before. David, you know why you can't have your dinosaurs. Because of the bad thing? That's right. The bad thing in my brain? It will use them. And make them bad. Right, that's why we're here. To fight the bad thing. And guess what? We're winning. I know it's boring here. There's no TV or toys or kids to play with. But the bad thing has nothing it can use to hurt you. We're safe here. Maybe it's calm now. Mm, I don't think so, sweetheart. I think it's hiding. Waiting for us to make a mistake. But we're not going to. We're, we're too smart. And if we stay and keep fighting, the bad thing will give up. It will get bored and leave you alone forever. We just got to be strong. We got to be fucking tough. You just said a bad word. <gasps> I know. You know, sometimes it's okay to say bad words. Like on your birthday? <laughs> yeah, like on your birthday. Can I say it? Let's both say it. We gotta be fucking tough. We, we gotta, gotta be, be fucking, fucking tough. tough. We, we gotta, gotta be, be fucking, fucking tough. tough. We, we gotta, gotta be, be fucking, fucking tough. tough. See, it felt really good, right? Yeah. Now, let's eat some fucking cake. You've lost a lot of blood, Dave. I need to remove the bullet immediately. Uh, have you done this before? No. Oh, well, I've never been shot before, so first time for the both of us. Do you know your blood type? Oh, I think. You think or you know? Well, I'm, I'm pretty positive. We need to be sure, Dave. A transfusion with the wrong blood type would be really fucking bad. I'm 90% certain. Hey, how you doing, man? Oh, you know, I'm... A little leaky, but Linda's gonna patch me up. Where'd you take him? I locked homeboy in the custodial closet. Is he secure? I threw him to the ground and cuffed his legs and arms together. Fucker isn't going anywhere. He really turned on the waterworks, though. Started crying, snot dripping on the floor. Yeah, man. He was so scared, I thought he shit himself. Oh, my God. Dave. Katie stood in the doorway. She looked tired and shaken. Her eyes were red and hazy. I noticed the cast on her arm. It ran from her wrist to her elbow. I had never seen her this way. So run down, like a person who had a glimpse into hell. Come here. 
As we held each other, her shirt began to soak in my blood. Both of us were scared, wounded, and going off for 48 hours without sleep. Hi. Hey. How's your day been? <laughs> Fuck. What did he do to you? Oh, it's nothing. I'm okay. I just, um... I'm really happy to see you. Hey, Dave. Yeah? We should operate now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm ready. Mateo? Yes? I need you to see if the computers are running. If they are, pull up Dave's file and find his blood type. Then I need you to run down to the freezer and bring me a 250 milliliter blood bag that matches his blood type. Can you handle that? You got it. Is there anything I can do? Just keep Dave company. Okay, first I need to clean the wound. Oh! Ah, Sorry. Shit. Now I'm gonna inject you with some lidocaine. Oh. oh! As the tingling numbness settled over the wound, I looked up at Katie. This isn't gonna be easy. If you need to step out of the room, I'd, I'd understand. I'm not going anywhere. She took my hand and held it tight as Linda picked up the scalpel. You ready? Uh, just fucking do it. On most nights, the old man's dreams were peaceful. He would dream of the jungle. His childhood home, where his people had lived for thousands of years. In his dreams, he would become an eagle and fly high above the trees. On some nights, he'd be a wild boar, or a snake in the grass, or a tree frog. And sometimes he'd dream of the ocean, where he'd take the form of a whale. But over the last few weeks, his dreams turned dark. The old man's visions disturbed him. He dreamt of a wicked thing chasing him through the jungle. It was a beast with many faces that howled like a monkey, hissed like a snake, and laughed like a woman. The old man knew he could not outrun it. He would have to turn around and face it. He would have to fight. Dad, you've been dreaming again. Want some water? No six, Pop. Doctor says... Spit on the doctor. It's my lungs. <laughs> okay, Pop. Going back to sleep. Night. June 30th, six nights before it began. <clears throat> the old man's dreams hadn't been this vivid since he was a boy, back when he left his tribe. That was over 50 years ago. He had lived in the mining town for most of his life. He raised his son here and buried his wife here. But now, after half a century, the spirits of the jungle were warning him. Something was coming. The old man stepped outside to smoke on the porch and listen to the rain. That's when he heard something strange coming from the back of the house. It was the baby lamb, just born last week. The river must have overflooded because it was being ripped apart by a dozen crabs. The old man took a rock and ended its misery. This was a dark omen. 
something unnatural. These were creatures from the land and water that were never supposed to meet. But the barrier between their worlds had been broken and could never be repaired. The crabs of the river had now developed a taste for lamb. The Edge of Sleep stars Mark Fishbach as Dave, Pat Healy as the Trespasser, Victor Rasuk as Mateo, Cara Santana as Linda, Alex Esso as Katie, Marsha Cross as Tracy, Sander Argabright as Young Dave, Michael Yama as the Old Man, and Colin Lim as Felix. Written by Jake Emanuel and Willie Block. Directed by Jake Emanuel. Produced by Q Code, Daylight Media, and Mark Fishbach. Recorded, mixed, and mastered by Salt Audio. Original music and score by Jamie Sheffman and Noah Gersh for Salt Audio. Sound design by Maria Mora and Juan David Chaparro Perez for Audio for Media. Edited by Zach Jurich. Associate Producer, Tess Ryan. Script Supervisor, Sam Beasley. Production Support, provided by James Gelberg. Casting by Chelsea Block and Marisol Roncalli at Atomic Honey. Art by Matt Taylor and Aaron Salazar. Special thanks to Jeff Roy, Mark Holden, Kirsty Jan Verdal and Celeste Armstrong. The Edge of Sleep is a Q-Code production. If you enjoy the show, subscribe to The Edge of Sleep on Apple Podcasts or wherever you find your favorite audio dramas. You can also visit our merch store at qcodemedia.com slash the edge of sleep.